Your work always tells a story. Let's have a close look. wonderful opportunity today to speak with Dr. Jody Samra, who is not only a very successful psychologist, but is also a TV host on a brand new show on the Oprah Network. First, I'd like to say you look absolutely beautiful today, Dr. Samra, and thank you so much for joining us. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me here today. So this show that's going to be on the Oprah Network, it's called Million Dollar Neighborhood, and it's based in the Lower Mainland. So tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, this is is a fabulous concept. So the show is called Million Dollar Neighborhood. It's airing on Oprah Winfrey Network Canada this weekend, Sunday, January the 22nd at 5 p.m. Um, and what we've done is really a social experiment, and it's first of its kind. We've never done anything like this before. We're taking a community of 100 families um, in in Alder Grove, BC, and working with them to help them increase their financial net worth collectively by $1 million over the course of 10 weeks. Wow, $1 million over 10 weeks, that sounds like a big challenge. So what was your role in the show? I, I know you're the host, but your role as a psychologist in the show. Yeah, well, well, it's funny because a lot of people will say, you know, as a psychologist, how are you getting involved in a financial series? And when you think about it, so much to do with money is emotionally based and driven, right? And the principles of finances are relatively simple, right? They are earn more, spend less, and save more. And then you think, well, why is it that so many people struggle with financial issues? It's not because they don't know those basic principles. It's because there's other kind of emotional, psychological barriers that get in the way. Um, and money brings up so many emotions for people. Fear, anxiety, anger, guilt, shame, embarrassment. So, it, it, And it's quite fascinating when you start to delve into the reasons that people have financial issues. And was there one reason that kind of stuck out in your head? Are you, are you allowed to speak about it yet? Yeah, well, I mean, I think one of the things is there's a lot of shame and stigma in our society about speaking about finances. So it's seen as this very taboo topic. So people may be struggling, but they'll feel embarrassed or shameful to bring up their issues, to acknowledge them. Um, they feel like talking to other people might um, be exposing themselves um, to some kind of vulnerability where people will look down on them for decisions that they've made. And I think that's one of the big, biggest barriers is that people won't talk about the issues. And, and of course, if you can't acknowledge issues or speak about them openly, it's really almost next to impossible to seek help for those issues. Yeah, definitely. And is, was there one tip that you were constantly giving to people? Yeah, you know, one of the things I would say is, is first of all, realize that almost everyone will struggle with some part of their relationship with money and finances at some point in their life. And think of money as a means to an end. So what's really, really important is to step back and think about what is my money for? What are the short-term dreams and goals that, I've ha that I have? And what are the long-term goals and dreams that I want to be able to achieve? That's definitely some good advice, especially for the viewers of this show who are youth and are, who are just, you know, maybe getting into university and are getting into that whole world of debt. So do you have any tips for them maybe? Yeah, well, it's interesting because um, we're not taught about money, right? So you go to elementary schools or high schools and no one teaches us the basic principles. So my advice is actually to parents to start to teach kids about how to manage money, speak about it openly. Um, and it's interesting, a lot of how we feel about money comes from our family of origin and how our family thought about or talked about finances. And a lot of families um, will just not address these issues. They don't teach their kids the basics um, and they won't acknowledge times that they're having difficulties. You know, I think especially in this day and age of consumerism, there's such a pressure on people to kind of keep up with the Joneses, right? Like get the newest toy, um, you know, the newest fad, do it because everyone else is doing it. And then what happens is people get um, into situations where they're spending well out of their means. Thanks for that advice, and I'm sure the youth appreciate it. So this so show sounds really, really interesting, but I want to talk about you a little bit. I want to ask you how you got involved. I mean, it's on the Oprah Winfrey Network, so was there extensive auditions you had to go through, or how did that work? Well, I was approached um, almost a year ago by Force 4 Entertainment, which is the Vancouver-based production company um, that has produced Million Dollar Neighborhood, and asked to submit um, an expression of interest and five months later I ended up being selected as one of the hosts for the show. 
So that's definitely in its own really, really exciting. But I was talking to you earlier and you said it had always been a dream of yours to work with Oprah and in a way you're kind of doing that. So how did that feel? Well, I, like many, many other people, view Oprah as being such an inspiration. I mean, she's done so much in terms of bringing so many difficult, taboo topics um, out into the public realm and having people be able to speak openly about issues like, like finances, like abuse, domestic violence, relationship issues. And yeah, I mean, I feel really humbled and very proud to be associated with a project that has her name on it. So that's, that's been really fabulous for me. Now, more than ever, people are struggling with their finances and rising debt. Financially, things right now are an all-time low. Maxed out credit card, maxed out line of credit, living paycheck to paycheck barely. We didn't plan on a layoff. I wasn't able to afford food for my daughter. 100 families will attempt to raise their collective net worth by $1 million in just 10 weeks. I can't even believe it. Can an entire community come together and put aside their differences? What you wanted could have happened. I don't tolerate shit. I'm the bad guy. For a series of epic challenges. Give us those credit cards. As in right now. This week, the kids are responsible for coming up with the money. Produce the ultimate wine and dine event. They'll have to make tough decisions. You're going to have to decide what stays and what goes. Crap. If that's the course we have to take, then that's probably the step that we should take because we need to provide for our children. We have $65 to last us until next payday. The challenge is getting this community back to work. Park your cars for the week. You will be doing all the work. Can they build a community and learn to work together? Nobody knows what's going on. There's a problem on a multitude of levels. How did that happen? It's been up and down and up and down. That is bullshit. Sorry. I can't do this. This is not working for me. You can't always do it alone. They think that they've gotten over their hurdle, but there's more coming. How far are they willing to go to become the million dollar neighborhood? We've got to do something now. It is not going to be pretty. It'll be a hard financial ride. Tell me what you need. You guys are awesome. You would pay a million dollars to save your child. We cannot turn back now, can we? Watch the bar! Go, 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 go! It's definitely a dream come true in itself. But you're also a private psychologist. So I want to ask you how you made that move from, you know, psychologist to TV host. I mean, those are two completely different things. And what made you want to jump from one to the other? Yeah, well, that, that's a good question. And it's funny because sometimes I stop and think, how the heck did this happen? Um, well, I think I'm combining my love for two different things. I, I see myself as a specialist in human behavior. So I love anything to do with people, understanding people, getting to know them, and really being able to assist them during difficult times. And for me, I feel like the media is one of the most important vehicles that we can use to be able to disseminate knowledge about topics that the average person might not otherwise know. So, I mean, I've got a private practice in Yale Town and I see patients that come there, but unfortunately, psychological services aren't covered under extended health care. And there's really only a small segment of the population that will ever walk in the door and see me and be able to receive assistance. Um, but because I've been fortunate to get some wonderful opportunities, like writing a weekly column for the Globe and Mail, um, I, I, I'm asked by media a lot to comment on psychological kinds of issues, the reach is much greater. And that's the part that I really love, is being able to impart information about psychology to a wide number of individuals. Psychology is a very heavy topic. You know, you're dealing with some very heavy issues. But I want to ask you, do you make time for yourself? Because now, now you're a host on the Oprah Network and you work 24 hours a day, it seems. So do you, do you have any hobbies? Do you, take in, do you take time out to do things for yourself? Well, you're putting me on the spot here because my work-life balance is not very good. And I know it's, I, I'm not always practicing what I preach to people, but I love what I do. I, and I really do. And, and I feel like I've been so fortunate to get so many wonderful, wonderful opportunities um, come my way that it gets hard to say no. So if anyone says, do you want to do this? I just, without thinking, will end up saying yes. I've got a best friend who's always um, saying, 
do you really need to say yes to that? <laughs> Someone you might know. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it was actually my 2012 resolution to kind of chill out a little bit and, <laughs> and take some breaks. <laughs> Well, obviously, all this hard work has definitely gotten you very, very far. But do you think that it's important for people to balance out, you know, work and play? And how, how much of a balance do you think is appropriate? Well, that's a really good question. One of the things that I specialize in is um, organizational issues. So I do a lot of consulting with companies. And, and they'll ask this question about, you know, work-life balance. What does that mean? And, you know, I don't know. There, there's that saying that if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. So I, I really think it's personal. I really do. Um, you know, at some point, it's we. You know, what might work for you is not going to work for me, and vice versa. But I think you got to stop and say, "Am I happy doing what I'm doing?" And you definitely seem to be, of course. <laughs> um, so we have a lot of aspiring psychologists maybe out there watching. Do you have any words of inspiration for them? I do. I love what I do. It, it is such a rewarding career. Um, there are very few psychologists, there's very few that are in our community. I mean, only a handful in this whole province. Um, and there's such a need for individuals that are driven to be in this profession. Um, I think I'm a testament to the number of opportunities that exist. So, so people will think, well, a psychologist, what does that mean? Are you just kind of sitting in an office listening to people's problems all day? Um, and that's very little. Of, I mean, it's a part of what I do, but I do so many other things that you can create just a really fun, interesting, rewarding career. Um, so I say dream big, like set the goal high and go after it. Definitely. And that's obviously proven right for you because you have a show starting on the Oprah Network. So just to remind our viewers, it starts this weekend on the 22nd. And what channel is it on? Yeah. So, so Million Dollar Neighborhood on the Oprah Winfrey Network Canada. Um, it premieres January the 22nd, which is this weekend, Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. If you, ha if you are on Shaw on a PBR, it's channel 96 and TELUS, I believe it's 202. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out for us today and I wish you all the best in the future. Great, well, thank you for having me um, and for individuals that want more information about um, my show, they can add me on Facebook or add me and add me on Twitter and I'm putting updates on, on the show um, on a regular basis there. Wonderful, thank you so much.